Welcome. This is a video about how to use a basic DMX controller to control a basic laser system. This time we'll have the LaserWorld EL230 RGB laser system. It's a basic laser system for effects mainly. And we have a basic DMX controller with some like eight channels plus a second page. So 16 channels per scanner, per device, and um, some basic programming features. I have the Eurolight one here, but there is similar products from other manufacturers. They work very similarly, so probably even identical. So this is a very generic video that applies to a lot of different controllers out there. First of all, before we get started, we need to learn a bit about how the laser is set up and how the laser gets going, because this is a specialty about lasers. If you look at the back side of the laser, there is two things that are special and are different to normal lighting devices. In this case, it is the key switch you have. Put that to on, to on the laser. And we have the interlock. Interlock is for attaching a e-stop to the laser. This is important to be able to interrupt the laser operation in case of emergency. This is required by law, and that's why all lasers have this interlock connector. And uh, for demo purposes, not for live operation, for demo purposes, we have this interlock bridge. So we can bridge that uh, safety plug and uh, bridge the signal and get it going for demo purposes. For live operation, of course, you use an e-stop either for the power or for the interlock signal. We also have the DMX connectors here, DMX in and through, and we have the function dip switches. These function dip switches are important to set an address for the laser to be determinable inside the DMX universe. DMX works in a way that it triggers internal memories of devices. It can be a moving light, it can be some PAR cans uh, or some other devices that are DMXable like uh, strobes or fog machines, haze machines or such, and um, also lasers. And um, you need to give each device inside one DMX universe an individual address. You can give the same address to several devices, but then they will do the same thing or at least the same channels are triggered. They can probably do different things if the intelligence inside the device is different. So if you give the same address to a laser and a moving light, that will be some kind of weird situation because it will look kind of mixed up because they do completely different things. So if you have a moving light and a laser in the same DMX universe, give a different DMX address to them so you can individually control what they're doing. To ease the whole process now for the demonstration, I set the laser to DMX address number one. Of course, you can use different addresses, but it's easier for us now. If you don't know how to set the address properly, have a look at the LaserWorld website. There is a dip, dip switch calculator, DMX dip switch calculator there, where you can easily enter the address and the dip switches are shown in the correct way. So you can easily set it at the laser. Okay, we're good with the laser. Now let's have a look at the DMX controller. First of all, to connect the laser to the DMX controller, we need to use a DMX cable. There is normally DMX cable have five pins, so that's the standard. But especially with lower end products, you find a lot of three pin DMX connectors and especially if products are designed for the use with basic controllers, normally it's a three pin connection. Lighting connection always goes female first. So this is the plug that goes into the laser and this is the side that goes into the controller. Fun fact, if you deal with sound, sound goes the other way normally. Okay, so 
we're good to set up the laser. So this side goes into the controller and for the laser, I just flip the bracket upside down and put it onto a tripod with super clamp on top. So that makes it rather easy to set up the laser. When you mount the laser, always make sure that the cable is not just plugged in, but you take off the tension so the ports at the laser do not break. It can be simply by the weight of the cable, but also if somebody falls over the cable or something like that. Don't forget to put the laser to on. Always make sure that the area is clear and nobody is in the area where the laser is going to project when you switch it on to make sure that nobody gets harmed. Now let's have a look at the controller. The laser is good to go. Let's switch on the controller. We switch the controller on and there can be several circumstances that may lead to an irritation. So first of all, it can be that the blackout is on. So you see there is on the display, there is a green light flashing at the blackout position. And um, this indicates that there is blackout. So there must not be any light flashing at the black blackout. So we are sure the laser is switched to on. There is another thing that is kind of irritating and it's these two faders. Normally you, you would assume that you put the lasers, uh, the, these faders to full on or full off to have an effect. And um, in this case, it's completely different. You would normally not expect that, but it is designed like that. And you will find that at different types of low end controllers that work the same way. So if you look closely, there is 0.1 second assigned here and 10 minutes down here. And here it's the other way. It's zero and on the top is 30 seconds. So these two faders are responsible for the fade time and also for the sequence time, the stepping time of a chase effect. We will program a chase effect later so you will see how this affects the chase effect. Now, these two faders need to go that way, 0.1 second and 0 second, to see immediately what's happening. So when you, when you play with the faders later, you will not see what's happening if you have it like that because it takes a, lot, a long time uh, for the whole scenery to change. And for programming, that is really bad because you think something's not working right. That's why for programming, just do this counterwise uh, to make sure that everything happens immediately. Later on, you can play with it. There is different effects, uh, but this is something that you can play with yourself. Um, now, if we would just pull the faders up, nothing happens. This is because on these type of controllers, you need to activate the scanner you want to use. So these type of controllers have 16 faders or fader positions, 16 channels assigned per scanner. Uh, this is very special with these, with these controllers, but it makes sense if you work with different types of scanners or moving lights. But what we need to do to get going, we need to activate scanner number one, because this is channel number one that we now going to use. So with lasers, normally you have on channel number one, you have the option to select sound to light mode, automatic mode and DMX mode, normally in that order. So in, in the lower third, there is some change to sound to light mode, two thirds, there is automatic mode and then full on, there is normally uh, DMX mode. So what we're going to do is we go to DMX mode because this is what we're going to use. Now this is DMX mode and um, you see there is already output going. I don't have a DMX chart with me now because I normally don't need it with these basic controllers because we can simply determine what feature does what by using the faders and just playing with them. So what I assume now is on channel two, I can select the different gobos. So it's the pattern selection on channel two. And what you can do uh, is you can have a look at the values shown in the display when moving the faders. So you can see that there's different patterns on different positions and you can see the values shown. You 
Okay. You can see there is different different gobos set up there. On the second channel, you see it's left and right, so X and Y axis. On the uh, on the fourth channel, it's up and down, so it's the the Y position. And then we have some some sort of drawing speed on channel five, on channel six. We have some some sort of, of squashing. And on channel eight, we have different colors. This is what we're gonna play with because colors is something that you probably wanna change a lot when, when doing a sequence, a scene or whatever chase effect that's uh, pretty nice with different colors. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna move on and program some scenes. Scenes are kind of static setups that we can recall later. So when you set up a scene, you assign certain parameters to that scene. And when recalling the scene, these parameters are applied. Now let's have a look. So first of all, we need to switch to the program mode. This is special with these uh, controllers. So every controller works slightly different, but normally you have to enter some sort of programming mode. In this case, it works like that. There is a button that it's marked program and you push that button and hold it until a light flashes in the display at the position where there is program. Now we're in program mode. As you see, the laser switched off. So what we need to do is we just get the fader down, get it up again to initiate the laser, do something. So what we're gonna do is we just do colors, different colors with these scenes. We determined that channel eight is the colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the first color is like it's some white. So we put, push the button add and then we push the scenes button. And you have a look, you see that the display flashed and also the other lights flashed. This indicates that it is saved. So scene one is flashed and now um, with this color. Now we do different color like, um, yeah, this, this purple, we use this purple. Add scene two, flashed again. Different color. Let's do red, add scene three. Different color, it's like yellowish green, add scene four. That's it. So it's pretty simple. We just added different effects and stored them to scenes, which are static. Let's exit the program mode by pressing the program button again and holding it until the, the controller switches to blackout. Now it's blackout. We need to switch on after blackout. After having exited the program mode, we turn off all the faders, we switch off the scanners, and we select our scene number one. We can also disable it, activate it. If you press it twice, it disables. We can select a different scene, and you see we can select the different colors we just set up, which is quite nice. Now we want to go further. We want to create a chase effect. Chase effect means it's a row of scenes. So it's a sequence of scenes that we can play back later with having some fade effects to it. So it's fading smoothly or it just chops and it plays in a sequence in a certain speed. We can also adjust the speed. These two faders basically are responsible for that later. So to do so, we enter the program mode again, press program for longer, then we are back to program mode, it flashes. So we're back to program mode and it now started scene number one. Now we wanna add a chase effect. So we program the chase number one. To do so, we press chase one. So you see there is a fourth digit that showed up on the display. It's the first one. This is the first digit shows the, the chase number. So now we're programming the chase, not the scene. To do so, it's pretty simple. We hit add to add this scene to the chase. So add 
one. Add, it flashed. Add. Now we add two. Add three. Add four. Add. That's it. So this is now stored to the chase and we exit program mode again by pressing it for longer. Now we can play back the chase effect. Plays back the chase effect. Now it just plays this pattern because we didn't assign any speed to it. So what we can do is we set it to auto mode so it automatically triggers and then we need to do the speed. But you see already it changes. But it changes not in the speed we want to set. So you can set the speed with this button or with the faders, whatever you like. And you see the different colors are changing in the order I just programmed them. And that's it. It is pretty simple. So you can make scenes, you can make chases, and you can individually control the different features of the laser. Probably you wondered how you could see those laser beams in mid-air. Just filming it with a camera probably doesn't look like that at your house. Pretty obvious, you need some particles in the air to make the lasers visible. It can be either a fog machine or it can be a haze machine. In my case, I use a haze machine because it makes very, very small particles in the air. You don't see it but you can see the light effect with them. And that is very, very helpful. And you can normally use haze also in venues where you can cannot have like dense fog effects or something like that, because the haze is not that offensive. It is just in the air and people normally probably not necessarily recognize it if you don't tell them. So I recommend using a haze machine, a proper haze machine uh, to make laser beams visible.